Good morning, friend. Okay. I think my clock says it's eight o'clock. So we will go ahead and get started. So today we are going to um, play with backbends. Um, and we will work toward full wheel at the end. Um, but there certainly will be other other options. But it will be a fun class today, I think. But what I wanted to start with is we're thinking about um, like our chemical, emotional thought body. Um, our, in my training last night, our philosophy class topic was karma. And, you know, what karma is, is the law of the harvest, right? That which you reap, you will also sow. Um, that there's this cause and effect that happens throughout the whole fabric of the universe. But it's not just the cause, it's not just the effect, but it's actually the whole idea, it encompasses the action and the, the result of that action and the reality that it creates, the circumstance that it creates, right? So your karma is the reality that you are presented with each moment of your life, you know, and this happens by just little seeds being planted. And It's those little seeds that grow into our reality, that things are created spiritually before they are real in the world. And in our own personal lives and our, um, in the reality that we get faced with day to day, right? Those seeds are the thoughts the things that are happening in our mind, the thoughts that create the emotions inside of us that fuel and motivate the actions that we take, that create the results that we see outside of us. And it takes a lot of observation to start to see those relationships in our lives. Um, so I pulled out this little book called As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. Um, he was an existentialist thinker um, in the late 1800s. I think he was kind of a contemporary of um, Emerson and Thoreau. But this book is just such a little gem. I'm just going to read a couple of quotes from here. He says, as a being of power, intelligence, and love, and the Lord of his own thoughts, man holds the key to every situation and contains within himself that transforming and regenerative agency by which he may make himself what he wills. When he begins to reflect upon his condition and search diligently for the law upon which his being is established, he then becomes the wise master directing his energies with intelligence and fashioning his thoughts to fruitful issues. Such is the conscious master and can only thus become by discovering within himself the laws of thought, which discovery is totally a matter of application, self-analysis, and experience. That it's all that combination, right, of application, self-analysis and experience that we have to reflect on our experiences and start to notice patterns right we we have agency in the way we interact with our lives 
And I'll end with this one. He says, a particular train of thought persisted in, be it good or bad, cannot fail to produce its results on the character and circumstances. A man cannot directly choose his circumstances. And I think that's so important for us to, when we talk about these kinds of things that our thoughts create our reality, then, you know, immediately we just go to, I mean, we can find a lot of arguments against that, right? Why does, why are people in horrible, horrific circumstances? Um, how can that be a product of their own thoughts? But our experience of our circumstances, our personal experience of our circumstances, is different than someone's observation of that. Does that make sense? And um, so he goes on to say, a man cannot directly choose his circumstances, but he can choose his thoughts and so indirectly yet surely shape his circumstances. Now it makes me think of Viktor Frankl, who was um, in a concentration camp in Nazi Germany. And in his book, Man's Search for Meaning, and his reflections on that experience, he said that our one thing that no one can take away from us is our ability to choose our own thoughts that determine the reaction to our circumstances and that actually plant seeds that grow into our reality. And, you know, we live in time, so we have a past, a present, and future. And so we can just deal with what is in front of us at the moment. And we can either ignore it, right? And that's just kind of like replanting those seeds, or we can look at it, experience it, deal with it, digest it, process it, and grow. So I just invite you to think about that as you go through your day and as we go through your practice through our practice this morning. And we'll actually start standing, I think, today. So just come up to the top of your mat and just feel your feet on the floor. You can start kind of swaying from side to side, feeling the texture of the mat under you. Just kind of calibrate. I stood up a little too, too fast. So maybe you did too. You can just feel your blood flow regulate. But just start to bring awareness to your body, shifting weight forward and back, side to side, maybe even swaying in some circles here. But just wake up all those parts of your feet. You get so much feedback and information from the like all the fascia your connective tissues in the bottom of your feet and so you might notice how kind of playing with the load on your feet will turn on different muscles in your body so you can notice lifting your arches lifting your toes grounding through your heels so just experiment there and just feel that kind of ripple effect through the rest of your body. You can really turn on some awareness. Right, and so that feedback and relationship with the ground, see if you can really feel some opening through your heart just by the feedback through your feet. and just play with that cause and effect just in the fabric of your own body. We'll make our way into a chair. Make sure everyone's muted.
And so we'll just sit in chair pose. Oh, sorry. Let the little window thing open. And then just come out of it. And let your arms get into this. So as you sit down, let your arms float up. And then let's just stand back up. So just start to pay attention to what muscles move your arms and see if you can use the least amount of effort possible to reach your arms overhead and feel the connection of your arms all the way down your back just sitting in your chair and then coming up just do one more there and then we'll find some twists so as you sit down in your chair just reach your left arm back and your right arm forward and then you can come to back to standing and just go back and forth here. I'm just twisting. Back and forth. And you can let your arms just kind of float. You don't need to really be spreading through your fingers or anything. Let's just go one more time to each side. Just feel the warmth that you're building through your shoulders. Just end in a standing forward fold. So just soften through your knees and let yourself hang down. You can find a few little sways from side to side. And so in my training that I've been doing, we've been talking a lot about the fascia. So it's just like that white wrapping around all the parts of your muscles connecting your organs right it just kind of is this connecting web link to everything in your body take a big step back with your left foot and we'll come into a low lunge and then i'll keep talking while we do something else so our fascia just always wants to move it has so many nerve endings it's almost like an extension of our nervous system so bring your hands inside of that right foot and just kind of play with your lunge and so the more movement we have, the more aware we can be of what's happening inside of our bodies. So the swaying in your lunge, it wakes up your nervous system, it kind of teaches your brain where the parts of your body are and it helps you be a little bit more aware. But it also moves, right? Our fascia gets more pliable the warmer it is. And so that's helpful when we're moving and it's connecting everything. So maybe change your exploration a little bit and you can bend and straighten that right knee some. If you need to pad your left knee, grab a blanket. You can always walk your hands back, but let this be pretty fluid. You can find some swaying in between, lengthening through that right leg. It's the first time we've gotten into our hamstring. So right, just be kind of friendly and ease into it. You don't need to get your leg all the way straight. So just take one more breath here. Just kind of with your wiggly lunge. And then we'll come back into a table. And let your hands plant. And so um, I want you to play with just noticing what happens when you put weight on different parts of your hand. So I've always been, you know, spread your fingers maximum distance apart, really root down into the inner edge of your hand. And what happens is that really stacks your bones up. So you can feel that. So spread your fingers wide, push into that um, L shape of your index finger and thumb, right? And it's really pushing into the inside, right, the radial side of into your radius, which has a, a really solid connection at your wrist. And you can feel that just kind of bone stacking there. Okay, and then just kind of back out of that, shake your hands, and then just let your hands fall on the floor how they will. And um, notice where just if you just kind of let your hands fall on the floor, 
where the weight wants to go. Probably wants to go into the padding or even more on the pinky edge. So just notice what that turns on in your body. So here on your ulnar side, your little ulna, it's not really connected to your wrist. It's a little tiny there, but it's really solidly connected to your elbow. And it actually turns on all these muscles all the way down up your arm and out your back. So just kind of play, like go back and forth, push your hands off the floor and just play with um, your hand on the floor, right? So we, our hands have arches just like our feet. And so, you know, though the bone stacking way of doing everything can create some stability, we actually use more muscular strength and get better feedback through our nervous system if we're just letting our hands fall naturally. So that's new to me. And it's been really interesting to play with. So I want you to play with that today. And maybe even just let yourself have more weight on the pinky side. You know, like let yourself have an arch shape in your hand. And notice how that feels through your core, your back, your wrists. And I want you to try putting load on your wrists in different ways. So put the backs of your hands down, maybe put the sides of your hands down. You can even get a little bit of a push-up action going here. Just kind of waking everything up in your body and connecting your brain to your hands that your wrists can do all sorts of different things. And you don't even have to do the same thing with each hand. You can switch. Let's just do one little more bounce here and then come to stillness. We'll just find a twist. So thread your right arm underneath your left armpit. And let your right shoulder, right side of your face come to the floor. And you can lengthen out through your left arm. I like to reach it over toward the right, get a little more length. And breathe into your back body. If it feels good to sway a little bit, you can sway your hips. And then plant that left hand in front of your face. We'll just switch sides. Push your way up. Slide your left arm underneath. And find leverage any way that feels um, like it really helps your back stretch. And it supports your twist in a pleasant way. And then plant that right hand in front of your face. Make your way up and just push yourself back into a child's pose. And you can sway a little bit here. On your inhale, really push into your shins and start to lift your hips, let your back round, draw your belly up, rock up into a table, and then let your heart come forward like a cow. And then exhale, hips to heels. And we'll just do that a few times. Pushing into your shins, let your spine really, really round. And then reach your heart forward and connect your breath to your movement in a way that really just makes sense to you. And pushing into your feet. So I'm kind of exhaling here with this round. Inhale to reach your heart forward. And then exhale, hips back to heels. And come back up to table and pause there at your table. Lengthen your right leg back and just find some ankle smushes there. Just find circles, really push into your foot and load your ankle in all different directions. And then reach that left leg straight up. Now feel your balance, feel the feedback of your hands and just, you can play again, like rocking the weight to the inner edge of your hand and then letting the weight be on the outer edge. 
what feels a little freer and engaging. And you can reach your left arm forward. And just balance. And release everything down. Tuck your toes, make your way back into downward facing dog. And shake your head no. Nod your head yes. And again, just feel the feedback from the floor on your hands. And just kind of notice what feels the most supportive in your downward facing dog. So you can try that spreading fingers super wide, like you're um, kind of palming a basket basketball, pushing into the inner edge of your palm. And then let your fingers relax a little bit. Let the weight come into the meaty part, maybe the outer edge a little, and just play with it, right? Just play with it in your body. See what feels the most free and supportive, intelligent. And then look forward at your hands. Just take a walk up to the top of your mat. Inhale and halfway lift. Exhale and fold. Inhale yourself all the way to standing, reach high. And exhale, hands to your heart. Bend into your knees and just inhale. Just float your arms up. And then just come to standing, let your arms come down. And think about using your back body to lift your arms. So strengthen there through your back body and just find some warmth through your shoulders. And then we'll find our twist. Maybe this time reach your right arm back first and then come to center and left arm. And you can bounce a little bit in your chair. It doesn't need to be super deep. Let's do right and then left and then standing forward fold. Uttanasana. Inhale to step your right foot back into your lunge and you can bring your right knee down and bring your hands inside of that left foot and you can find your little wiggles here. So just greet this left side. It may be totally different. You can come on fingertips. You can have your hands on a block. Play with finding a little length through that left leg. But the whole point of this is just to kind of move through all of the tissues of your leg in a really supported exploratory way. So you're waking that up. It'll all come on board and be ready to work for you. Right, and so it's this experience and investigation. Like we can do this in our bodies, right? But we can do it in our observation of how the world works, the dynamics in our family, how our relationships work, how nature works, right? It's all related, but it's nice to experiment here. Step back into your table. Let's take a few moments to explore your relationship of your hands with the floor and you can even find some push-up action and get more of your shoulders into it and go in all directions and you can use both sides of your hands even and just kind of just teach your wrists that they can take load in all different directions you could even, you know, find some circles like we do with our ankle smushing. Just experiment, right? This is just kind of getting warm. And then pause. Take your left leg back and push it back and then find your circles on this side. And go in both directions. And 
And then lift that leg, lift your right arm. And you can experiment with this left hand, like where, where does the feedback on your hand feel best in your body, right? Where do you get that ripple effect that feels supportive? Does it help to have some arches in your hand or push down? Just play with that and then release. Push yourself back into a puppy pose. So reach your arms forward and keep your hips where they are and then let your heart melt. And you can sway your hips from side to side here. Maybe forehead comes to the floor, maybe chin comes to the floor. None of that is um, required. You could always have a block under your head even. Just stretching through the fronts of your shoulders. And you can sway through your hips a little bit. Maybe even rock your head from side to side. And then push yourself back into a child's pose. Push into your shins, let your spine round, come up to your table. Maybe reach your heart forward. You could drop your hips a little more. So kind of in a tall cobra, upward facing dog thing. <laughs> Exhale yourself back. And push into your shins, round up. Maybe inhale your heart forward, drop your hips even more. You can go back to child's pose or you could tuck your toes and just go back into downward facing dog. And just find movement there some more. So from your down dog, you can really round your upper back as you roll yourself forward into plank, reach your heart forward, and then come back. So you can do this from child's pose or from your downward facing dog, just either one. We'll meet back in our downward facing dog. And come on to your tippy toes, look forward, soften into your knees. Make your way to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift here. Exhale, fold. And we're gonna come right up into our chair. So sit down in your knees, reach your arms high. And just pause and let yourself feel strong Open through your collarbones. Find some space for your neck. And you can keep your arms up or you can bring them to your heart. We're going to come all the way down onto your, our bum. So lift your heels, squat. You can use your hands as you need to. Use a chair or a couch around you. Bring your bum to the floor. And we're going to just float in a boat, but you're going to wobble. So just start with rocking side to side, maybe swimming your legs a little, but just notice what happens right from your center as you're moving around. You can swim your arms back, look as silly as possible. <laughs> it's such a good exploration. You can even just play like, where's the edge? How far can I go before I feel like I'm just going to totally fall? So just rock around, maybe two more breaths. And then plant your feet to the floor and bring your hands behind you. I want you to play again with your wrist position here. So just keep your bum on the floor and just push into your hands. Just playing with the feedback of your hands into the rest of your body. And find a hand position that feels good for you, that feels supportive. Okay. So I like my fingers kind of facing my bum. We're gonna come up into a reverse table so draw your shoulder blades together, push into your hands. Okay, and before your bum even comes up off the floor, just kind of find 
some support of your shoulder blades behind your heart and then lift your hips and then come down and you can kind of readjust your hands. We're just gonna come back and forth here a couple of times. And go ahead and come on up and then release down. We're gonna come all the way down onto our backs. So you can hold onto the backs of your thighs, lower yourself down. We'll do some bridge here, but just let your arms kind of rest. Feel the warmth in your shoulders. Just push into your feet, lift your hips and lower. You can do a few with your hands down alongside your hips and then maybe try some just with arms overhead. Just do one more and hold. Really let the front of your body open and feel the support of your back body. So you can let your glutes get involved and feel the muscles of your whole back. And then release. Hug your knees into your chest. And we're gonna roll up to um, a table and then make our way to downward facing dog. So you can roll to your side and push yourself up or you can rock and roll forward. And then when you get forward, cross your ankles, just plant your hands, step back and make your way to downward facing dog. And pedal it out there. We won't be here for super long. And just notice the placement of your hands, what feels supportive for you. And then lengthen your right leg up and back. Bring your right knee into your chest. We're gonna plant the right foot behind your right wrist. And then come into a high lunge here. Just reach high and get some length through the front of that left hip. Maybe grab onto your left forearm, find a little bit of a side bend. Reach high, exhale your hands down and we're just gonna step up to forward fold at the top of your mat. So find your forward fold, inhale halfway lift, exhale and bow, just check in with your body, see if you feel a little bit different from one side to the other. And then sit down into your chair, we'll just come straight into those twists. So with whatever arm you wanna start with, just find those swinging arm twists and just let yourself get even on each side keep your arms up or use your hands to help you make your way down onto your bum and we'll just find our boat pose you can wiggle here and then let your wiggles get bigger See if you can get your arms into it a little more this time. You can like kind of think you're lassoing something. Maybe pedal your feet. Yeah, I think of this as like falling through space in a cartoon. All right. And then release that effort. Just plant your hands behind you and find that supportive place for your um, reverse table. So you can keep both knees bent, or this time you could experiment with straightening one leg, pushing into your hands and lifting up, and then resetting, maybe straightening the other leg and pushing up, maybe straightening both legs. Just do what feels friendly in your body. So that's a big load on your shoulders. <laughs> Just keeping both knees bent. All right, Just one more opportunity 
for whatever flavor you want there. And then we'll come down onto our backs. Just hold on to the backs of your thighs, lower yourself down. And this time find robot arms, push the tri your triceps into the floor. So your palms are facing each other, fingertips are facing up. Draw your shoulder blades toward each other and really push the backs of your triceps into the floor. And then release that effort and just kind of let that diamond shape of your trapezius muscle relax onto the floor. So engage there, push, and then release and relax. Release your hands down and push into your feet, lift into your bridge. Maybe you clasp your hands underneath you. Maybe you just keep your hands by your side, wiggle your shoulder blades together. Maybe lift a little higher. And you can find a little bit of swaying. You can think of, you know, like you're a hammock swaying in the wind. Just kind of alternately pushing more into your right foot than your left foot. Just kind of wake up everything in your back body. And then you can find stillness. And release yourself down. On your knees into your chest. You can roll to your side or you can roll straight forward. Cross your ankles, plant your hands, step back to downward facing dog. Lift your left leg and step your left foot forward and just find your high lunge here. Just reach high. Just open through your front right side of your body and grab onto that right forearm, find a little side bend. And then reach high, bring your hands down. Step forward into your forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale to fold. Inhale yourself all the way to standing and just pause there. Just kind of feel the energy in your body. Feel the warmth. And then inhale, reach high. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale to step your left foot back and set yourself up for warrior one. So ground your left heel um, and you might want to kind of bring your feet hip distance apart. Float your hands back by your hips. Really push into that left heel and then inhale yourself up. Reach your arms high. And just pause here. So just feel like we're in a back bend. Can you feel that back bend happening? through that left side of your body. I want you to flex through your wrists and just come halfway forward, but sweep your arms back. So really, and really push back there. And then inhale back up. So like you're pushing the ceiling away. Now bend your elbows, just let your hands come by your ears. And then push the heavy air up toward the ceiling. And we're just gonna do that a few times. Come forward. Hands by your hips, inhale up, and then hands by your ears, and then push up. Just move at your own pace. Connect this with your breath, so really make sure you're breathing, like in a really smooth, supportive, and rhythmic way. And then next time, just let your arms come down, interlace your fingers behind your back, draw your elbows together, maybe lengthen, knuckles away from your sacrum, and then let yourself fold 
into a humble warrior. And just breathe. Take one more breath and then release your hands down. Lift that back heel and just bring your left knee to the floor and inhale yourself to a low lunge. And just feel that back bend through your left side body, maybe even a little more. Release your hands down and then just bend your left knee and then lower it. If that's too much on your knee, you don't need to, or you can pat it. Bend your left knee and then grab onto it. Draw that knee towards your heel and then keep it there. Keep your leg there, but see if you can let go. Reach your arms. Hello, quad. Open up and then, I mean hamstring, and then release. Just step back to downward facing dog and pedal that out. Inhale onto your tippy toes. Exhale, bend your knees. You can step or float to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way to standing. Reach high. Exhale, hands to your heart. Just check in. And then release your hands. Inhale, reach high. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale your right foot back, setting up for warrior one on the other side. So I, I like to toe heel my left foot to the left just a little. Ground through your right heel, float your hands back by your hips, feel strong, push into that left heel and come on up and reach high. Now flex through your wrists and then feel that sense of a back bend through your right side body. So you're doing your back bend here without any weight bearing in your arms. Maybe even open a little more. And then come forward, hands by your hips. And then inhale, like you're pressing on the ceiling. Bend your elbows by your hands by your ears, and then push the heavy air up toward the ceiling. And just do that same thing a few more times. Connect your breath with your movement. And then interlace fingers the awkward way behind your back. Draw your elbows toward each other. Open your heart. And then let yourself fold. You could rest on that left thigh or bring your left shoulder down inside that left knee. Let your head just hang. Release your hands, lift your back heel, bring your right knee to the floor, and come on up into your low lunge. Reach your arms high and just feel that back bend here. Release your arms down and then just bend through your right knee and then release. And if that's just too much for your knee, it's totally fine to skip it. You can just be enjoying your low lunge, maybe reaching your arms high. You can bend that right knee again, reach for your foot and draw that foot close to your bum. And just feel the opening there. And then really engage through your hamstring. Try to keep your heel where it is and let go, maybe reach up, hello hamstring, and then hands to the floor. Make your way to downward facing dog. And sway your hips from side to side. And just feel this whole body experience. Feel your fingertips. 
and feel your toes and everything in between your shoulders, face, neck. And then bring your knees to the floor. And you may want a blanket for this. We're just going to do another like psoas quad stretch. So you have a couple of options. You can kind of do this deer pose. So I've got my right heel kind of outside of my bum on my right side. And my left leg is just bent. Okay. And then you can lean back any amount on your hands. And I'm kind of engaging through that right glute as I'm lengthening and stretching through that right quad. So that's option number one. And you can sit as high as you need to. You can even sit on a block. But try to have on this right foot, I'll turn this way, and your knee can angle out any amount, okay, on this right foot. Just try to have the top of your foot on the floor so you're not on the side of your ankle. So that's option number one. If you um, have plenty of range of motion, if this feels okay in your knee and your ankle, then let your knee point straight forward from your hip. Bend your left foot and bring it to the floor. Okay. And you can start to lean back. I like to come all the way onto my back. So you can come to forearms. You can come all the way down. You can even reach arms overhead. I like to clasp opposite elbows. And then let your front ribs, ribs kind of soften. And that right knee is kind of staying in ground. So find your, find your way anywhere on, through all of those options. Okay. And then we'll make our way to the other side. So if you're laying down, just come back up onto your forearms, push your way up, come all the way up, shake out your legs. And then we'll switch sides. So left foot outside your left bum. You can be sitting high on something if that's just too much for your knee. Okay, and we're just working on opening through the front of this left quad. Okay, and your knee can be angling out as much as it feels friendly for your hips. You just get to decide there. Okay, if this feels really fine and not like much of a stretch make sure your knee is pointing straight forward okay and you're kind of energetically pushing all of those toes down right foot flat on the floor okay and then you can come down onto forearms you know maybe just leaning back on your hands is plenty you just get to decide come all the way back on your back maybe reach arms overhead Wherever you are, just breathe and feel, like use your breath as that tool of investigating your experience and finding patterns. And then we'll all make our way onto our back. So if you're sitting just kind of unfurl your legs and make your way onto your back. If you're laying down, you can just take that left leg out. So laying on your back, feet flat on the floor, and just kind of wiggle your bum a little bit. So feel like you're pushing your right knee away from you, drawing your left knee closer, and then switch. And you'll sway a little bit. It's just really subtle on the floor. Feel this on the back of your pelvis. You might feel that ripple effect through your whole back, maybe shoulders getting involved. Just to settle. And then we'll make our way to our back bend. So you can do bridge. Just wiggle your shoulder blades together. And push into your feet 
and lift your hips and let yourself feel some freedom in your pelvis. Maybe even find that hammocky sway, but feel like you're dragging your heels back. Really turn your hamstrings on. You can stay here, you can interlace hands. You could even put a block or a pillow or something under your sacrum just to support you in a restorative bridge pose. If you want to try with full wheel, you're gonna take your hands, right? And your wrists know how to take a load. You're gonna take your hands alongside your ears, okay? And let yourself feel the relationship of your upper arm bones into your shoulder sockets. Feel stable on your hands. Push into your feet, push into your hands. Like we did this in our warrior one where you're pushing up toward the ceiling. So just push that heavy air up, maybe come to the crown of your head and reset your shoulders and then maybe push all the way. And you know, I like to come on my tippy toes at first. Let your heels feel like they go kind of wide. Reach your heart forward. Feel some buoyancy through your shoulders. And then you can tuck your toe, your chin, sorry, and make your way out of that. If you're in bridge, go ahead and come down. And just pause, knees, feet wide, knees together. If you've got a support under your sacrum in your bridge, you could just stay there. Okay, one more round, whatever your back bend is. So feet on the floor and I prefer that you have your feet parallel, but try not to be too rigid about it. Like be really friendly with what feels good in your lower back and your feet and your hips and then lift up. And pause there if you're ready for another full wheel. You can plant your hands. Right? And just remember that weight on your hands, how that can turn on your whole back body. So push into that padding on the pinky edge of your fingers, I mean pinky, pinky edge of your palm, as you push yourself up and just feel your whole back body turn on and bring your arms towards straight. And then when you're ready, tuck your chin, make your way down. Knees wide, I'm feet wide, knees together. And just breathe here for three really long, smooth breaths. and feel the result of your actions. And now let your knees come apart and just windshield wiper them from side to side. And then hug your knees into your chest and pause there. So you can roll to one side and push yourself up to seated or just roll straight forward. We're gonna do a little bit of a forward fold to counter that back bend. So sit tall and find a little bend in your knees, okay? And just while you're sitting tall, you can have your hands by you. I just want you to feel that dragging of your heels toward your sitting bones, okay? And then pushing your heels away to kind of straighten your legs. And just keep your spine as tall as it can. Just find that action through your legs. And then we'll let our spine get involved. So you're pulling your heels back and let your spine come forward and then pushing your heels away and then just come back up to seated. So you're just kind of making a wave with your spine. Let your hands get involved any amount. So as you inhale, 
feel like you're dragging those heels back, you can find a bend in your knees and use that strength to pull you forward. And then as you exhale, you can push your heels away and round your way up. And let this get as big as you want it to. And if you come down and it feels like a good time just to hold your forward fold, you can. And you can even still find that action with your knees connected with your breath. Even as you're holding your fold, you can kind of find that engagement of your hamstrings and then that pushing away. And then eventually you can just totally come to stillness, right? But you're just kind of teaching all of those parts of your body to line up, make space, kind of like you're kind of going through the weeds <laughs> um, plowing your way through those or gently parting a big field of grass as you fold making your way to a clearing Go ahead and make your way up and bend both knees. Bring the soles of your feet together. Let your knees go wide. And you can kind of do that same thing here in your Baddha Konasana. Just kind of feel like you're dragging your feet toward you as you reach your heart forward and then push them away as you round your spine up. Just find that wave. And as it feels good, just to pause and hold, feel free to do that. I like to hold on to my toes. <laughs> but just see if you can kind of fill every nook and cranny of your body with your breath. And check in with tension in your neck. If you're holding tension in your neck, let that go. Notice if you're clenching your jaw or scrunching up your forehead. And then let yourself come on up. Bring your hands outside your knees to bring your knees together. Just make your way onto your back for your final rest. So lay down. Let your palms face up. And then just notice every part of you that is collect connected with the floor. Just feel the backs of your heels, the backs of your calves, your glutes. Notice what parts of your back are touching the floor, what parts are not. Feel the length of your arms. You can feel the texture of your mat under your skin, on the back of your head. And then just kind of find some easy wiggles. So just like we did earlier in our um, bridge when we kind of pushed one bum away and then pushed the other, just kind of see if you can find that. Just start your wiggle from your hips, those biggest muscles, and see if you can let that kind of ripple all the way into your shoulders, your legs, your ankles, your feet, and you can let your arms shake, and just let yourself shake. Let your head shake, your feet, and you can let your shakes get a little bit faster. Just shake, 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 but also stay relaxed as you can. Probably looks silly, but don't worry about what it looks like. Just feel this from the inside out, just shaking. And then you can let your shakes just fade away. And just notice the aliveness in your body. Just bring your whole body into your awareness and just let yourself feel and settle.
our thoughts are the seeds that we plant. And sometimes they're so patterned, so unconscious, so below our awareness that we don't even realize what those seeds that we're planting are. Maybe the only way we notice or can feel a sense of what it is that we're thinking is by feeling the emotions in our body. Just that underlying current is just kind of always humming in the background. Our thoughts create our feelings, they create our emotions. And our emotions fuel our actions. And the action that we take creates the results. And those results eventually become the circumstances of our lives. But circumstances are just things happening outside of us. And those things just are. The place where we have the most agency, the most freedom, the most ability to choose is if within our own internal experience in that thought body. That emotion body. And it's all one and the same. Just let yourself relax here for as long as you'd like. When you're ready, you can reach arms overhead, maybe wiggle fingers and toes. Roll to one side. Make your way up to a seat. The divine light in me honors the divine light in you. Thank you for practicing with me today. Namaste. Thanks, everyone. Have a lovely day. Thank you. That was a great wheel.